Roughly five years ago, Volkswagen introduced a new premium flagship sedan to America called the Arteon. Now, in an SUV crazy world, the Arteon seemed like the wrong vehicle at the wrong time, and sales have been tepid. VW managed to sell a little over, a little under 1,200 units in all of 2022. Now, that didn't stop the company from giving the Arteon a big round of updates last year in the form of more power, more specifically, the two liter turbo from the Volkswagen Golf R, giving us 300 horsepower. It got some slight styling changes on the outside and it got some upgraded tech on the inside, which still represents one of the most premium interiors that Volkswagen offers in today's US lineup. So as you can see this week, VW has loaned me this beautiful Kingfisher Blue Metallic Arteon in the SEL Premium R-Line spec. And the big question I went answered, if you guys are looking for an upscale sedan that has tons of space for your family and their stuff and doesn't break the bank, how does the revised 2023 Volkswagen Arteon stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Now, one of the big changes for 2022 is under the hood, so I figured I'd start here. Now, unlike some competitors or other markets, VW does offer the Arteon in so many different flavors. However, here in the US, we only get one engine, which is a good engine. This is a two liter direct injection turbo four from the Volkswagen Golf R. Now, this engine, if you guys are familiar with the Volkswagen family as part of their E, E888 two liter direct injection TFSI turbo four cylinder. Now, compared to the uh, pre refreshed model, that engine made 268 horsepower. Now it makes 300 horsepower. So it's about 15 horsepower shy of the Golf R, but it makes the same torque at 295 foot pounds. That's a 37 pound feet increase over the prior generation. This is essentially the engine that the, R the Arteon should have gotten uh, when it was first launched. Now, keep in mind in Europe, VW does offer an Arteon R, which has the full fat version of this engine at 316 horsepower. However, this is only detuned slightly. It all goes out through a one choice, seven speed dual clutch transmission. So again, it's the same powertrain from the Golf R. Uh, if you guys go for the base Arteon SE, which all comes standard with the R-Line package, you have front wheel drive, the SEL and up, like my tester has all wheel drive, their four motion all wheel drive system. Although it's not quite the same system in the Golf R, which gives you kind of like a drift function. This car doesn't have that obviously. Now fuel economy is rated at 22 in the city, 31 on the highway. Premium is gonna be recommended for performance. This vehicle has roughly 450 plus miles of range on a full tank. It's got a big gas tank, which is great. In terms of the performance, VW doesn't quote a zero to 60 time. We'll test it out with our equipment. I suspect it's gonna be fast. Uh, and as this vehicle sits, it weighs in at just under 3,900 pounds. So it is around 300 pounds heavier versus a comparable Volkswagen Golf R. But let's go ahead and close up the hood, which as you can see, it's a clamshell style hood because it goes almost all the way out to the fenders. But uh, this model has always been a looker for me. I've always loved the way the Arteon looks. And for 2022, VW updated the look slightly. I love this Kingfisher blue. They made the R-Line sport package essentially standard. And you can see we have a big version of Volkswagen's corporate grill. It's got these uh, horizontal chrome slats. It even has an LED light bar that goes uh, basically into the Volkswagen emblem almost and it connects the two headlights together. Love the R-Line badge over here. And then, then all our, our Arteons come standard with the company's full LED headlights. These are adaptive automatic high beams. You have LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, some functional vents as you can see in the front fascia some functional vents here, but no LED fog lights. This vehicle does have cornering lights or all weather lights, but no actual fog lights, but that kind of substitutes the fog lights in. But overall, let me know what you guys think of the styling. I think this car is aged really well. It has a certain presence to it. It almost looks like an Audi A7 on a budget. Again, that's what I love about the RTM when I first saw it. Now moving around the side profile, you can see this is a bigger sedan, but it's not quite as big as the Toyota Crown or a Kia Stinger at 191.9 inches long. It's about three inches shorter than a Stinger and of Toyota Crown. Its wheelbase is just shy of 112 inches long, but it still has a nice big presence. So, I mean, this is way better versus the Volkswagen Passat, which was also just discontinued. You can see if you guys go for an SEL and up tri uh, trim, you'll get a 20 inch wheel. The premium adds a unique bicolor 20 inch wheel. This is riding on a 245 35 R20 Continental all season tire. Uh, you can see the wheels have kind of like a directional spoke to them. You also get adaptive dampers, but no air suspension, but you do get adaptive dampers, which is nice. You can see there's an R-Line badge over here. The mirrors have a power folding feature and they also have an integrated turn signal. 
Um, the upper trim, the SEL trim, will come standard with this panoramic style sunroof, although it's technically not a full pano. It really is just a slightly larger regular sunroof. There's a lot of chrome trim on the vehicle, which surprisingly, they don't give you the ability to black it out. I think it would look even better, but you can see here, moving around this angle, this is also a beautiful look for the RT on. I think this is one of the best looking large sedans out there, way better looking versus the Toyota Crown, and even better looking for me versus the Kia Stinger. It's just really understated and elegant and classy. You can see you have this nice tasteful rear spoiler, which is black. You have full LEDs for the taillights. There's a four motion badge to let people know that you have the all-wheel drive model. And then the exhaust system you can see is integrated into the bumper. The R, the actual R version in Europe has a quad outlet exhaust, which I wish VW would have offered that here. And then you can see here, there is a power opening trunk lid and you can see, unlike some competitors, this is actually a hatchback. It's a sport back, kind of like an Audi A7. And then Volkswagen says with the uh, seats up, you get a little over 25 cubic feet of storage space. Fold them down, they didn't have the maximum amount, but this is way more practical versus other sedans. You can see nice storage to the side. I love these little uh, cargo uh, protection system where it's kind of like a cargo divider uh, and it also holds your, your stuff in place. Underneath here, you can see there is a temporary spare tire. Although I believe actually Volkswagen said, actually, I'm, I'm kidding. This, this is actually a full size matching spare tire and wheel and it fits underneath here, which is kind of crazy to find in uh, today's modern vehicles. But overall, compared to your average sedan, this is still greatly more practical. So let's go ahead and move on to the interior of the 2023 Arteon, which as you guys saw, the exterior didn't get that many changes. So let's go ahead and talk about the inside. However, uh, let me first show you guys the fob. This is again, uh, the current Volkswagen fob, although it's a little bit different on the Arteon where it has uh, some chrome accents. It feels a lot more substantial. It feels heavier. It's metal as opposed to feeling like a cheap plastic on the lower level models. You can see there's lock, unlock, open up the trunk and then remote start and along with panic. I believe if you have, if you have access to the Volkswagen Connected Services app, you should be able to also ping this vehicle and access it through your smartphone. Now, as I touch the door handle, you can see uh, the mirrors will electrically fold in. The door handles are very traditional. As I approach the vehicle, just touch the back of the handle that will unlock the door for, for you. Now, looking at the interior of my test car, it's a really great color combination with the Kingfisher blue metallic. This is the uh, upgraded leather that comes with the SEL. It's a stone and raven two-tone interior. So it's kind of gray and black with the contrasting stitching. The seats are 12-way power adjustable uh, for the front. You have three-person memory on the driver's side. These are heated, ventilated, and massaging. Although, my tester, because it's a COVID, car, VW removed the ventilated front seats, the heated rear seats, and the massage function for the driver, and they gave you a $500 credit because of that, which I would happily pay the $500 to get those features back, so keep in mind my tester is missing that. You can see the lighter color, the gray, definitely shows dirt. This vehicle only has like 1,200 miles on it, and it's showing a lot of dirt on it. So I would recommend getting a good leather cleaner that should wipe the dirt right off, but just keep that in mind if you guys want this lighter interior, you're gonna have to keep it clean, probably clean it at least uh, once a month or so. You can see the dashboard or the door panel has this beautiful uh, soft touch material with this faux stitching on it. You have real aluminum on the door panel. There's real aluminum for the door handle, some nice lighter leather here. It's padded down here. Down here it's hard touch plastic, but you can see there's like a mouse fur material on the inner lining of the door pocket, which is is nice. The window control is one touch for all four, which is nice. They feel high quality, very Audi-like. And then there's also this beautiful ambient light strip in here, along with some nice ambient lighting throughout the rest of the cabin. But overall, it makes a great first impression. Now, as I get in, this has a low step in height because it's a sedan. And as I, now as I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. This is built on the MQB architecture that so many other VWs are built upon. Now, start stop button is right here by the shifter. There's no 48 volt mild hybrid system, so this vehicle has a traditional startup noise. And you heard that is the corporate two liter turbo from the Golf R. Sadly, it doesn't have any you know, aggressive sounds that you might hear from a Golf R, you can see. It just sounds like any other four cylinder, but again, this is supposed to be a premium sedan, not a sporty sedan, uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the interior. You can see same soft touch material here on the upper dash with the faux stitching, more of that real aluminum trim, piano black plastic, silver painted plastic accents. You can see the, the uh, steering wheel, it looks like it's been lifted off of the Golf R minus like some of the contrasting stitching. You can see our logo over here, fat uh, flat bottom design. Uh, really fat, thick rim, which I like. The steering wheel itself has a manual tilt telescoping with a nice amount of adjustability so you can get pretty comfortable in here. Um, you have paddles on the wheel for the seven speed dual clutch transmission. You have the touch sensitive controls, which VW added when they refreshed the vehicle along with the new logo, the horn, 
sounds good. It doesn't sound puny or minuscule, appropriate given the size. They added a new 10.25 inch digital uh, cluster here, which is new for 2022. You can slightly customize this by pushing the view button here. You can go to a simplified look. You can show a little bit more in terms of stuff, and then you can go to a traditional twin dial look, which I much prefer. You can also put the GPS function in there, which is nice, kind of similar to Audi's uh, virtual cockpit display. They call it digital cockpit. And then you can see here, you have an eight inch touchscreen here with not the latest version of Volkswagen infotainment system but it still includes wireless apple carplay and android auto the screen itself is starting to look a little bit small but at least you have still actual volume uh, and tuning knobs you have actual climate functions here which is touch sensitive it's got a th triple zone climate control system which is kind of nice you can see this is quick and snappy and responsive for the most part uh, and then when you go to the menu here, there's all your different widgets and such. You can change the ambient lighting in here. Uh, I have it set to green, but you can go to several different colors. It actually affects the color of the instrument panel and the infotainment system, along with the lighting around the rest of the cabin, which is definitely a really nice touch. Um, if I put the vehicle into reverse, you do have an, a full 360 camera with the uh, top-down view, which is part of uh, the SEL Premium package. The graphic and resolution is fine, although it's definitely not as upscale or nice as the newer Volkswagen stuff. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. You have parking sensors front and rear. This vehicle also has embedded GPS, which is perfectly fine, although it's not quite as good as what you're going to be using from your smartphone. You can see there's the older interface, which is also fine. Um, but some of you, again, may prefer this over the new system, like in the Golf R and the GT which is just kind of infuriating to use. Uh, down here, you can see there's a wireless phone charging pad. My mm -hmm. iPhone 14 Pro Max fits, fits pretty well in here. Um, clearly, Siri also still works when I accidentally push the Siri button. I don't particularly love the location of it because as you can see, it's kind of hard to pull your phone out of it when you do have your phone in there. You can see there's a lid you can close, uh, but it's nice that you get a wireless phone charging pad. You have a traditional shifter for the seven speed dual clutch transmission with a manual mode and a sport mode, uh, like how it's traditional shifter, your drive mode selector is here. There's five different modes. There's a custom, eco, comfort, normal, and sport. And when you go to custom, you can kind of customize the setting to exactly how you'd like. You can even adjust the adaptive cruise control response and the dynamic chassis control uh, response, which is again, all very nice. Auto start, stop, defeat button is here. This vehicle also has automatic parallel parking, which is definitely a cool touch. Uh, open this up, you have your cup holders, you have your electronic parking brake, a 12 volt power outlet. And you can see this here is adjustable, which is kind of nice. A lot of VWs are getting rid of that. Open that up, there's two USB-C charging ports, a pretty small storage compartment as well, so nothing super special. Uh, the glove compartment you can see is damped uh, and lined with felt. It's a bin style, it's a pretty decent size. The seats are really comfortable and supportive. I'm just sad that they're missing the cooled function, especially in this heat and the massaging function. Would have liked to test that out. Um, the headrest restraints also, they move forward and back and up and down. Uh, this is a 12-way power adjustable seat. You can see you have LED map lighting in the cabin and along with the sunroof here, which opens up and tilts, which is definitely a nice touch. But again, it's not a full panel roof, but it's slightly bigger than a regular sunroof. The only thing that's really missing for me is a heads-up display. I would like to see VW include a heads-up display. The Harman Kardon stereo in this car also sounds good. It's not as good as the Bang & Olsen system and a lot of Audi products, but it still certainly gets the job done. But overall, the interior definitely still feels nice, still feels upscale. It feels very spacious as well, which is nice. Uh, but let's go ahead and hop into the back seat because this is another selling feature of the Arteon is the big back seat. Now, Volkswagen says you have a little over 40 inches of legroom back here. 40 inches makes this around three inches larger than something like the Toyota Crown, I believe. But once I get back here, you can see this is where I have the front seat to drive. For somebody my height, you can see I have tons of room to stretch about. There's great foot space. There is a large hump here, however, so the middle passenger is kind of shafted. You do have rear seat vents. You have triple zone climate control, which is nice. Again, there's supposed to be heated back seats here, but uh, VW had to remove it because my car is a, ch a COVID car. You can see you have a USB-C charging port, one and a 12 volt pow power outlet. You have two storage cubbies here, which is nice. The Armrest folds down and gives you two cup holders. There's also a nice little pass through if you guys want to access into the trunk, which is kind of a nice little touch. In terms of the headroom space, you can see at five foot seven, my head comes somewhat close to the ceiling. So the sunroof is taking up space, but again, overall uh, materials back here, soft touch plastic, more of that LED lighting padded here over here uh, and nice storage area with some mouse fur material in the actual storage compartment. So overall, the back seat is definitely a huge selling feature of the Arteon. This has one of the biggest back seats in the premium, non-luxury, full-size sedan segment.
So it's definitely been a few years since I've been behind the wheel of a Volkswagen Arteon. And this car truly is kind of a sad story because it essentially is the right car, the wrong car at the wrong time, even though it's such a good car. When I first drove this thing about four years ago, I was simply blown away and impressed with the overall package. It is a budget Audi in so many different ways. And if you look at it from that angle, the price becomes more reasonable, but it didn't stop Volkswagen from uh, giving us some nice updates for 2022. Now, the biggest update obviously is more power. 32 more horsepower doesn't sound like a whole lot on paper. I mean, 300 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque is probably the amount that the Arteon should have launched with. But um, now that we have the engine from the Golf R essentially, let's go ahead and test out what we can get zero to 60 wise. Now, Volkswagen doesn't claim a number here but I wouldn't be surprised to be to see if this car was close to what you could get in a Golf R, especially with that seven speed dual clutch. It is all wheel drive. It has launch control, but you have to access the launch control via the um, stability control and its sport setting. So once it's in its sport setting here, which I have it in, you essentially just brake torque it. It's all wheel drive. Oof. It does a 4,000 clutch dump. <laughs> and it spun out the front tires, as you guys saw, even though this car is all wheel drive, but I just got 4.7 seconds, zero to 60. Now, for comparison purposes, I tested a Kia Stinger GT line with the base 2.5 turbo and eight speed auto on that same stretch, and I got, got 5.7 seconds. So that is a full second faster than the Kia Stinger GT line. That's about as quick as what you're gonna get from a GT Stinger, which has the 3.3 liter twin turbo V6. That is freaking fast. That is almost basically as quick as a Golf R, which I think will do it with the dual clutch in around 4.5 seconds. So Volkswagen definitely uh, wasn't playing around when they stuffed the Golf R's powertrain in this vehicle. It is unbelievably quick. Let's just try it again here for consistency purposes. This is more slightly uphill, but again, brake torque it, launch control active, four grand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a sleeper, 4.9 seconds here with it more going slightly uphill. That is unbelievable how fast this car is. You wouldn't expect it to be this fast. That's the cool thing about the Arteon is like, it's so quick when you have the launch control, when you're brake torquing, you don't expect it to be because this car looks really premium. It looks really uh, expensive. It looks really stylish and sleek and luxury-like, but you wouldn't expect it to be fast. Now, I'm gonna actually test it one more time on another straight of road, stretch of road, but this time I'm gonna turn off the stability, or I'm gonna turn the stability control back on and I'm not gonna brake torque it this time. We're just gonna floor it because I wanna see the difference you're gonna get when you actually just floor it from a stop as opposed to uh, brake torquing because most people are gonna do that. But other than that, when you have the vehicle at its sport setting here, this car has the dynamic chassis control, so it has adaptive dampers. And even in this setting here, it rides really well still. And in terms of the road noise, it doesn't have too much. There's a little bit from these 20 inch wheels, but the steering in this car is relatively quick and sharp. It's not much in terms of feedback, but the suspension suspension stays nice and flat, surprisingly. I mean, this is a sporty car to drive, even though it doesn't look uh, super sporty at times, but it's surprisingly good. It's almost like a Golf R sedan. Like if you're looking for an even more grown up Golf R with more practicality, more space in the back seat, this is what you're gonna wanna take a look at because of how well-rounded this car is. I still love the way this car looks, still love the way it drives. Uh, in terms of tech, it has the older tech from uh, other VW products instead of the newer one, which is the most infuriating. Put your foot down here, you can feel slight turbo lag. The engine also doesn't sound too much in terms of like sportiness. The Golf R definitely has more of a sound to it. This doesn't feel quite as, you know, energetic or doesn't sound quite as energetic, even though the pull is there. But I do notice noticeable turbo lag uh, while the dual clutch kind of gets its thoughts together. It takes a little bit of a second, but let's go ahead and just try it right here. I'm not gonna brake torque it again. I'm just gonna leave it in sport mode and we're just gonna floor it from a stop and see what we can get. Definitely a lot slower. 5.5 seconds there. So you shave almost a second off the zero to 60 time when you use the launch control function. But still, 5.5 in day-to-day -day driving is fast. It's still fast enough for most people, and it's still quicker than the Stinger GT line four-cylinder that I tested when I was brake torquing it. So that really shows how, oh, look at that. The front tires are spinning. The rear, you can feel it kind of pushing the power about to get you out of that corner. <laughs> I seriously was not expecting this car to be as fun and as quick as it is, but it's still also really easy to drive. But let's go ahead and put the car back back into its normal setting 
and just kind of drive along here. This is where the Arteon reminds you that it is the flagship sedan of the Volkswagen family. It has uh, a really nice ride quality that it gets a little bit softer here. The steering gets a little bit lighter in this mode. It's even quieter. There isn't any kind of active exhaust, so the engine stays pretty much the same, but uh, the seats are also really comfortable. Now, my tester is frustratingly missing the vented seats, the heated rear seats, and the massage function for the driver's seat because it's a COVID car, and due to the chip shortage, VW had to throw those out and give you back $500 on the MSRP. I would happily spend that $500 to get those features back. Uh, but uh, the one thing really this car is just lacking for me is a heads-up display. I would like to see a heads-up display, especially at this top-of-the-line SEL premium trim. But you know, when I drive this car, I essentially feel like I'm driving like an Audi. It feels like a budget Audi A7, yet it has the performance of a Golf R in terms of the acceleration, not in terms of the visceral noise, which is fine, but this car is just fantastic. It's just a really, really good car to daily drive. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's smooth, it's quick, it's spacious, it's practical. I mean, there's so many things to like about the Arteon, which is why it's such a sad story for me because Volkswagen is going to send it off into the sunset and replacing it with the ID7, which is an all electric vehicle that it's a little bit bigger than this, but if you want the best, you know, premium gas that NVW has, this is still pretty much it. Now, in terms of the fuel efficiency, it's rated at 22 in the city and 30 on the highway, I believe. And in my mix, in my week's worth of testing, I averaged actually around 24 MPG in mixed driving. On the highway, I got a little over 30, like 31 MPG, which is not bad. This car has a really big gas tank, so you have over 450 miles on a full tank. So it's an excellent cruiser with excellent range. So again, another reason to get this vehicle as a road trip car. And of course, with the Ford Motion all-wheel drive, it gives you that all-weather traction. Now, keep in mind, if you guys go for the base SE version, that has front-wheel drive. So you want to spend at least 47 grand to get the SEL, which comes standard with all-wheel drive, and it also gives you a bunch of other goodies. But overall, I liked the Arteon a lot when I first drove this car four years ago. Four years later, I still like this car a lot. Is it, is it the best uh, premium large sedan out there? That's debatable. I mean, there's the Toyota Crown, which you can basically get with two electrified powertrains, which will get even better gas miles than this, although you have to go for the hybrid max uh, platinum version to get acceleration that'll rival this, and I still don't think the Toyota is gonna be quite as quick. There's also the Kia Stinger, which you can get in the GT line and the GT with the twin turbo V6. Rear wheel drive, also going to be discontinued after this year. Uh, another great option as well. There's also the uh, Nissan Maxima, which the Maxima surprisingly is still out there. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper as well, but there's really not that many options left if you guys are looking for a premium mainstream large sedan that also has the kind of hatchback practicality. So overall, if you guys want something like this, or at least you want to drive something that's super rare, you really don't see these on the roads, be sure to put the RT on at the top of your list because it is going to be, again, discontinued after this year and replaced by the all-electric ID7. So after spending a full week with the revised 2023 Volkswagen Arteon, I have to admit, I am surprised at how much I still like this car. Even though there are obviously better, more fuel efficient, quicker, um, more upscale options out there, there's something about the Arteon that just feels special. It really does feel like a budget Audi A7, and that's a huge discount that VW gives this to you. Now, in terms of the interior, I like the fact that it has some upgraded tech, but not the newest tech that you find in something like the ID4, which is just frustrating. Uh, while the center screen is a little bit small at 8 inches, the full digital cluster looks nice. The interior materials are a lot more upscale. The seats are comfortable, although this uh, raven and stone interior was start starting to show dirt. So I would highly recommend just getting a good leather cleaner, leather conditioner. Uh, to keep the interior looking nice. The design of this vehicle still is attractive to me. And while it doesn't turn a lot of heads out on the road, it is just understated and classy. I think it's gonna age extremely well. I well, I think this car is the perfect size. It has a ton of space in the trunk. It has a ton of space in the back seat. And the engine, guys, zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds with launch control is just insane. 5.5 without launch control is still plenty fast. It's actually quicker than a Kia Stinger GT line. You have to, again, go for the GT Stinger to even keep up with this vehicle. So that was kind of, unexpected and the fact that Volkswagen does uh, offer all-wheel drive it's standard on the SEL trims and up makes this vehicle an excellent choice for those of you who again who want to buck the trend and not drive an SUV but still get the practicality of a bigger trunk and a bigger back seat that's kind of what makes the RT unappealing now what makes it unappealing however is the slightly higher starting price this vehicle starts at $43,000 for the base SE with front-wheel drive that is around $4,000 more expensive versus the Toyota Crown the base X XLE Crown, which comes standard with all-wheel drive, and it's a hybrid, but it also has around 64 less horsepower, but 
also better fuel efficiency. The Kia Stinger starts at around $36,000 for the base GT line, which is rear wheel drive. But if you add all wheel drive and add the option packages to make it similarly equipped, the Stinger's around $41,000. So again, it's still cheaper, but it's also less practical with less space in the back seat. This has one of the biggest back seats in the segment. If you guys want all wheel drive, you have to spend at least 47 grand for the SEL R line. This model here, the premium trim starts at around $50,000. Now, with Destination and the $500 credit that VW gives you for getting rid of the massaging seats, the ventilated seats, and the heated rear seats, you're looking at a little over $50,500. Now, $50,500 sounds like a lot of money, and it definitely is for a car that isn't an Audi, but keep in mind, a fully loaded version of the Crown Platinum is around $53,000. A Stinger GT2 is around $52,000. So the RTL is priced where it needs to be. However, because of the you know rarity of this car and the fact that everybody just wants a sedan and the fact that this is not an electrified option, so the fuel efficiency is kind of so-so, it does limit the appeal. But if you guys want something that's super rare and you want to buck the trend, I highly recommend putting this at the top of your list. You'll be pleasantly surprised at the overall package of the Arteon, which is made even better with the additional power last year. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2023 Volkswagen Arteon. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.